Graham Potter outsmarted police for 12 long years, becoming Australia's most wanted man until now. Tonight, a retired detective's biggest regret as he tries to work out how this fugitive was granted bail in the first place. He's led police on the nation's biggest game of hide and seek until now. Stay here, do not move. This is the police, do not move. Put your hands up where I can see them. Graham Jean Potter found in a shabby house in far north Queensland. Turn and face the wall. Hands where I can see them. As officers moved in on Australia's most wanted man, it's apparent the fugitive has been holed up in squalor, escorted between piles of rubbish, newspapers stacked up the walls, what looks like the home of a hoarder. 12 years outsmarting police and it ends barefoot on a sunny day. He's still dangerous to, to this day. The murder of Kim Barry was as brutal as any this country's seen. Her remains were found wrapped in a dressing gown. Potter's clean-cut, ordinary look is the ideal disguise for a fugitive. Victoria Police conceding the trail had gone cold. He was on bail for two counts of conspiracy to murder where um, there is strong evidence implicating him in shooting two separate people. What was my, my, my biggest regret, or one of my biggest regrets, and I have to say that the arrest of crime, Jean Potter, was my biggest regret. Retired Detective Superintendent Jared Ryan was heavily involved in the manhunt, overseeing the Piranha Task Force that probed Melbourne's underworld. When he went to jail, he uh, got to meet or got involved with, uh, with organised crime identities. He had a, a very uh, uh, physical side, side of violent side of life and uh, that uh, that's what organised crime want to have. Potter's criminal history goes back to 1981 when he murdered and mutilated Wollongong teenager Kim Barry on his Bucks night. He served 16 years of a life sentence behind bars. After moving to Tasmania in 2002, federal police swooped on him there in 2008 for alleged drug trafficking. Within days, he was extradited to Victoria over what police allege was a $440 million ecstasy and cocaine haul. But about about a month later, Potter was granted bail at Melbourne Magistrates Court. He'd killed before and it seemed Potter may have been willing to do it again. Hired police say to murder two underworld figures, allegedly with plans in place at a kickboxing tournament. At gangland figure Mick Gatto's son's wedding here in the Docklands and at a social club just north of Melbourne's CBD. But the alleged hit jobs never came off. So, in 2009, police charged Potter with conspiracy to murder, but again, he got bail. The following year, in February, he was a no-show at his scheduled court hearing, and so began Australia's biggest manhunt. Over the period of his life, uh, before and after he went on the run, that he had a great relationship of connecting with uh, women. That's interesting. So was that a consistent part of his MO that you think helped him over time stay under the radar? I, I, I think it did, yes. And we know on several occasions that uh, he befriended women in small towns and uh, was able to uh, evade police and probably uh, kept his identity at a very low pro profile. When approached by police, he, uh, he gave a pseudonym of um, Josh uh, Lawson. Queensland Police has revealed Potter's still using aliases. He also went by John Page and Jim Henderson. And one of his campsites left behind clues, equipment, a knife and handwritten notes on how to survive. A lot of articles of disguise, particularly hair dye and other handwritten notes indicating that you know, he'd certainly experimented with changing his appearance. The number one disguise that was always talked about is the fat suit that was uh, when he was uh, in Tully, when they found his campsite there. Since he skipped a court hearing, Potter was seen near Cairns in August 2010. Five days later, police got so close, spotting him in a car in Tully, south of Cairns, but he escaped. In 2011, police announced a $100,000 reward to find the fugitive. And in 2013, there were unconfirmed sightings in New South Wales, among others in Tokemwall and Cobram, near the Murray River. 
everyone would be asking a question the same as Victoria Police did, how did this person get, get bail? And so 12 years after skipping court here in Melbourne, Victorian detectives are in the process of hauling him here themselves. They'll extradite the fugitive from Queensland to front a magistrate in coming days. The big question now is what will Australia's most wanted man reveal to police about his life on the run? And will it leave any organised crime identities who crossed paths with Potter squirming? Do you think Potter's the kind of person who would have ever thought he'd be arrested? I think after 12 years, I think he'd be pretty confident that uh, he can last a lot longer. But I, I think in, in the back of his mind, he, he would have known that one day uh, time was up and yesterday was his time is up. Yeah, it certainly was. And Victoria Police are expecting to return with Potter tomorrow, where he'll likely face court that afternoon.